you know, I, I see a faculty that's happy and excited about being here and willing to work together a lot more than I did last year. And I would really say that it's the book that has done a lot of that to help and to just give us that energy to, to keep going. Hey folks, it's Mike with Peer Driven PD. And today we have a very special video for you. It is part two in a two video series on the book, The Energy Bus by John Gordon. If you want to check out part one, we'll link it somewhere on this screen and you can look at a full review of the book and what we loved about it, as well as some advice on how you can implement it with your school. Today, however, we're talking with Principal Robin Fiesit of Jacksonville, Florida, St. Joseph Catholic School, and how she implemented the book with her entire teaching staff, her entire staff, her teachers as well, and her students, which comprised uh, elementary, comprised, composed, which is made up of elementary and middle school students. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Robin Fiesit, principal from Jacksonville, Florida. So I am at St. Joseph Catholic School in Jacksonville, which actually is called Mandarin. We have a pre-K four to eighth grade, and we have two classes per grade level. So it's a pretty good sized school. It's one of the larger ones here in Jacksonville for the diocese. Um, we have approximately 475 students. This is actually my 18th year here, believe it or not. Um, I taught kindergarten for um, 12 years before I went and started doing STEM and STREAM and um, higher level learners. So some of our gifted kids between third and fifth grade and then became principal. So this is my fourth year as principal. So, so Robin, tell me how you were introduced to the, we're talking about the energy bus by John Gordon. Um, talk to us about how you're introduced to that book and how you have implemented it uh, or used it so far with your school. So over the summer, right, um, probably the end, well, I guess the middle of July, I purchased a book, the Energy Bus book for the entire faculty and staff. So that included teachers, assistants, cafeteria, um, our custodian, I mean, just everyone on campus. So we have about 55, 60 people and said, okay, before we report back to school in the beginning of August, I really want you to read this book because we are going to be doing this book study and I want everyone to have it read. And you always, as an administrator, and even for me as a teacher, I was like, okay, am I really going to take the time to read this or, you know, how many will? And it, I was so impressed because so many teachers and faculty and staff before school started went, that was such a good book. I'm so glad you found it. I'm so glad that we are able to um, look at it. Um, so then going into the fall and, and the actual study, how did you go about that? Like logistically, did you guys get together and discuss a couple chapters at a time? Did you do that in smaller groups? What did that look like for you? That very first day back, the entire faculty and staff had to bring their book. I put together yellow folders that had a um, little sign on it, sticker that says, you know, energy bus, put their name on it, put a couple of the guidelines that he had, the promises that he has within the book and all the things. And then we also had, um, I put together little goodie bags, if you will, that had everything about energy and positivity. And so that was something that they walked into whenever they came back on the first day this school year. It was a huge hit because everything, you know, they, they already read it. They already knew. And so when they walked in and saw it, um, they were really excited that we were moving forward with that. And it wasn't just, okay, read this book. Now we're done. Let's move on. It was, let's do something with this. So that first day back, we really talked a lot about the book. Um, I showed one of John's videos that he did, um, it's really fairly short. I want to say it's only about 30 minutes, but it kind of goes through um, not just the energy bus, but being positive and making sure that we are doing what we need to as educators and just as people in general. And we then went over the promises of being positive and being good leaders as we have our students come in. And then each month after that, we just keep that yellow folder and we go through 
through each month at um, one of our, we have half days each month. And I asked the entire faculty and staff to bring that yellow folder with them, the book. And then we do a short little clip of each specific rule that was on the bus. So, you know, the very beginning of the school year, we talked about rule one. And he actually gave a little questionnaire and we would go through and really have some good, deep conversations about that specific role and how we were feeling. And, you know, if we were really overwhelmed or if we were really positive in how we were going to stay on that bus. They also had little die cut school buses on the first day that they had to write before I really said a whole lot. Um, and it was one of those checkpoints to see if they read the book or if they didn't, but on the bus, they had to write the favorite part of their book or what stuck out to them most in that book. And I have those posted in our, above our mailboxes, the teacher and faculty mailboxes. And so it's just this long line of little die cut school buses and that's there. And we're always walking by it to really reinforce, okay, no negative Nellies and, you know, positive and love your passengers and all of that. And so that is how we really started and then how we've continued as a faculty to keep that and just not let that be like, okay, well, we talked about at the very beginning of the school year, we're done, just be positive, stay on the bus. And we've had some really good conversations too. Um, our office staff at one of our meetings, we were talking about one of the roles and as an office team, we said, you know, when we see someone that's having a really bad day or just isn't on the bus, we will say, okay, come on, you got to be on the bus, let's do this. And it was interesting because our office staff says that, but one comment was made from a teacher that if someone said that to her, she would really take offense to that. And, you know, it's not that she wasn't on the bus, she was just having a tough day. And we, as the office staff, hadn't really thought about that because that's what we were doing to help each other, you know, remind of, okay, wait a second, just breathe, just let's go. And so the conversations that have come up that I wouldn't have necessarily known as an administrator have really helped. And so we know that, okay, sometimes we'll laugh and joke about it and say, okay, well, our bus today had a flat tire and we just have to fill that tire, replace that tire and start all over. That's the kind of stuff that you want to bring to the surface and discuss, right? You don't want people feeling that and then not talking about it. So the fact that it's, um, you know, generated conversation with your staff in some tough areas and allowed you to work through some things like that's awesome. That's, that's a pretty big uh, compliment to the decision to, to move forward with the book. Um, so then you're also, you're not only doing it with your staff, you're also doing it with students, correct? Correct. Um, what is that? What does that look like? So that's a little more challenging um, just because of the time that it takes for the teachers to prepare. Um, at the very beginning, we well, and I also purchased the children's version of the book so that each pre-K through um, fifth grade class had the book. And then the teachers in six through eight use the actual adult version book instead of the kid version. Um, and the teachers have been working through that a roll at a time or a couple of pages. And it's based on the curriculum that was laid out in the energy bus for children or for kids. And so we followed that at the beginning. It was so fun to see the kids and even still walking around the hallway. We have several buses in windows Our one of our um, actually it's first grade, our two first grade teachers, their hallway bulletin board is this huge energy bus and their little kids pictures are inside looking out the windows of this bus. And so cool. every it is, it's so, I just love the picture. Um, but they, every month switch out what the rule is. So if we're on love your passengers, they switch that out and the kids talk about it. Um, in the older grades, it's a lot harder. They're not fully into, you know, they're middle schoolers. And so it takes a lot to sure. motivate them sometimes. Um, but I know I have middle school girls, um, I have twins and so they're in seventh grade and they've come home and they've mentioned some things to me and I'm like, oh, isn't it great? And they're like, yeah, yeah, but you no. Know, seventh graders are a tough crowd. 
It, they're a really tough crowd. But if you think about it, they'll, or if they think about it, they actually do a lot of the things and they talk about it without realizing that it's mm -hmm. from the energy bus. They will have forgotten oh yeah, this is what we read, or this is what we talked about. And the teachers in the middle school, one specifically is really good about, you know, if a kid starts to get really negative, she refers back to the book and talks about that specific rule. And of course, joy from the book, everyone loves. Yeah. And, um, you know, just trying to get those kids a little more involved and aware of their surroundings and what's happening but the younger kids are really doing a great, great job. And it is harder for our middle school teachers because of their schedules to add a lot into their plates, um, but they are reading it and doing that. And then the younger grades, fifth and below, every month have a little activity. We announce it on our morning announcements and they do little activities. Kindergarten made little driver's license for the kids. So they put, you know, you're the driver of your bus and they put their little picture um, in second grade, they actually had to write their goals. And that was from one of the activities, I want to say in October, that they had to write their goals. And so they have those hanging up in their classroom on their cubbies. So every day, every time they go to their cubby, they see that. And if they actually met their goal, you know, they go and they're so excited to tell their teachers and that's all because of the energy bus and the kids seeing it and being involved. We also have another area that's the center of campus that every month we put the new rule up. We put, um, you know, the little theme of what it is as well so that they see that every time they pass by that area as well. And it's, we email the parents as well. I forgot to say that. So the parents are aware of what our um, energy bus goal or rule is for that time. You know, knowing what you know now, you're uh, more than halfway through uh, this experience. You know, if you were giving advice to an administrator who's considering doing this, let's say next year, maybe they're thinking about doing it school-wide and with their staff, just like you did. Uh, what advice would you give them? Would you say, go for it? Would you say, go for it, but change these few things? Would you not do it with students, but only with staff? What would be your recommendation? So I definitely say go for it. I know one of the challenges that I had was because it was so last minute that I was doing it. So obviously a lot more planning involved. That would be the big thing that if I was looking at doing it next school year would be to really start in the spring in May and have that committee really put together a timeline and have everything ready for the teachers to do with their students or even have you know, a couple of dedicated people who go into the classrooms to do you know, a quick 30 minute session or a 15 minute session, just to make sure that it's being introduced each um, month or however they depended on you know, if it was weekly or monthly. I just gave my teachers, okay, this month, do this with your class because I didn't wanna set any specific boundaries because of what their schedules are. I wanted them to have a little more freedom. And um, that was good, but I needed to have someone, um, that group to kind of help me a little bit more because it was really overwhelming with everything else going on and trying to learn everything that the teachers are trying to do um, on top of their normal everyday things. So definitely go for it, but um, be a little more prepared than I was. If you were just going to do it with staff, because I think there's a, you know, a certain, maybe elementary schools are really considering doing the children's book. Um, middle, you're a great case study because, you know, I would think elementary and middle, elementary is probably the most likely for the kids book. Um, I could see high schoolers getting more on board with the, with the full book a little more, you know, they just tend to discuss life issues in a little bit of a different depth. Um, middle schoolers, that is a challenge. Um, that's impressive that, that, and I it sounds like if they're discussing those concepts, um, you know, one way or another, you kind of have to smuggle those concepts in rather than make it all about the book. But uh, specifically with staff, if, you know, an administrator was going to do this with their staff, I, I love the idea of, you know, having people read over the summer and then come back and jumping right in. Um, it sounds like if people were going to go that route, that it's quite a bit less uh, of a task to take on. 
Um, would there be any specific recommendations of anything you do differently or anything that worked exceptionally well? You mentioned a lot of it before that you would definitely recommend doing um, if folks were looking at uh, tackling it with their, uh, their teachers. I think obviously giving the teachers a little more lead time. So if in May the teachers leave and say, okay, this is your summer read. I know a lot of schools uh, the administrators assign a book to read. Um, it's not necessarily a book study. I've never done that before, and our school hasn't done that before. So this was something new, but I was so passionate about that book that I really just kind of threw it at them and said, okay, we still have two or three weeks left. It'll really, it's such a fast read. It won't take you very long. Um, you know, read a chapter every night before bed, whatever it may be. So I think giving them a little more lead time would be a big difference. But going into the very beginning of the school year during pre-planning and having that time already set in the agenda to get the motivation and to go through, you know, how to move forward this school year or whatever school year it may be. But I think if you just do it during the pre-planning and then you just forget about it and you don't reinforce it along the way, it just gets lost. And, you know, it's just this big hurrah at the beginning. And then if an administrator doesn't follow through or the teacher, you know, loses interest, I think just that reminding every now and then and bringing it back up. And so that's why we do it the once a month um, and just go over the rule. I know that, you know, the beginning was a great time, but having that check-in and that motivation to keep doing it, even whenever we're really exhausted and, you know, have so many other things going on. And with everyone being sick the last couple of weeks since we've been back from Christmas break, it's been funny because so many are like, okay, I know my bus is moving. It's moving really slow, but I'm staying on the bus. It just has a lot of stops, you know, and just things like that, that, you know, we're saying um, to keep each other going and, you know, to, to really reinforce that book that we talked about at the beginning versus just moving past it and forgetting what we learned um, and how it made us feel because they all loved the videos. And every time we watch a little snippet of his video for the book, you know, it just gives us more energy to get through. Okay. We can get through this next month. Okay. We can get through the next month um, and gives us something to look forward to. Now, you know, is everyone 100% on the bus all the time? No, I think that's impossible to do, but it's definitely made a huge difference in our culture and climate within our school uh, compared to last year, because last year was a really, really hard year for our faculty and staff, and we had a lot of struggles. And this year, even with masks um, on or off, you know, I see a faculty that's happy and excited about being here and willing to work together a lot more than I did last year. And I would really say that it's the book that has done a lot of that to help and to just give us that energy to, to keep going. So the videos and that sort of thing, it sounds like you found that pretty helpful. Um, would you recommend, there was some cost associated with that, right? Um, there but is. That sounds like that was worth it. It was 100% worth it. So we are officially a certified energy bus school okay. because we did the program and we actually, um, will get to host, they're doing a positivity, um, presentation and everything. And they asked our school to host coming up in April. So I'm very excited to be able to do that. Um, there's a Facebook group that if you're one of the energy bus schools that you have access to, and then just hearing what other schools are doing. Some schools in small rural areas can do a lot more. You know, one school had a parade where the whole city, you know, they had energy bus signs and their um, businesses and, you know, they could do that because it was a small community and they had everyone on the bus, you know, banks and grocery stores, whereas bigger schools can't necessarily do that, but there are so many things. And I think having those resources helped me get started with the process. My thanks to Robin. It was a huge help in sharing how she implemented the energy bus with her school. Now she made mention of several resources that she used that you can find at theenergybus.com. There may be a cost associated with some of them, not necessarily with all of them. I encourage you to check it out. 
if you are thinking about doing something similar. We have no financial affiliation, no affiliation whatsoever with the Energy Bus organization or with John Gordon. So we don't make any additional money off of that. This is purely uh, offering you the same resources that other principals have used across the country. Robin also graciously offered to field questions, give advice to administrators across the country who might be thinking about doing something similar. So if you're in the same boat that Robin was in over the summer and you are thinking about using this book with your staff or your teachers or your whole school, you can reach her at her email address will be on the screen here. Um, shoot her an email. She's great to talk to you. Very helpful. And we, again, thank Robin very much for her cooperation. Thank you.